It's time to talk about the proper motion of stars as we continue to discuss the different types of motions in the sky through this series. Proper motion can be defined as the observed motion of the stars across the night sky, but specifically it refers to the changes in their positions that can be seen over long periods of time. Just as everything moves in the universe, stars do too, and humanity has been observing the stars for many millennia, and through this time, stars have been observed to slightly change their positions in the sky relative to the other stars around them in the background. Now, unlike planetary motion, which shows the planet's position changing drastically across the sky from night to night, the proper motion of the stars shows minuscule changes in their positions, and it could only be observed if the star is moving left or right, or up or down across the sky. If, however, the star is moving towards us or away from us, which in most cases it is, no proper motion can be detected at all. On average, the proper motion of most stars is typically about 0.1 arc seconds per year. To give you a sense of scale, the full moon measures in at about 30 arc minutes in angular size. Each of these dashes represent just one of those 30 arc minutes, but within each arc minute are 60 arc seconds, just as there are 60 seconds in a minute of time. So when we say that the proper motion of stars is typically about a tenth of an arc second per year, we basically mean it's a tenth of these arc seconds, which have been significantly magnified to show you exactly how small proper motion really is. So even for the star that has the largest proper motion observed, Barnard's star at a whopping 10.3 arc seconds per year, we still don't see a significant change in its position unless we track its motion over decades. Another star with a notable amount of proper motion is 61 Cygni, which moves at 5.281 arc seconds per year, a little over half the rate of proper motion of Barnard's star. Its movement can be seen here over a period of seven years in the animation shown on the left. Now the amount of proper motion observed depends on two things, the distance between us and the star, and the star's true space velocity. To understand the star's true space velocity, we refer to its components, its radial velocity and its transverse velocity. A star's radial velocity is the velocity with which the star moves along the radial direction, meaning towards or away from the viewer along the viewer's line of sight. Its transverse velocity is the velocity with which the star travels across the sky either left or right or up or down from the viewer's point of view. Ultimately, the star's true space velocity dictates the actual physical motion of the star in three-dimensional space as it moves around the universe, but what we see, its proper motion, is based on the star's transverse velocity only. With all this in mind, we can take a look at various constellations and asterisms in the sky and get a sense for how they may have changed appearance over time. Take, for example, the Big Dipper asterism in the constellation Ursa Major. Today it looks like this and is one of the more recognizable shapes in the sky. These arrows represent the proper motions of the individual stars of the Big Dipper. The direction of the arrow implies the direction the star is moving, and the size of the arrow represents the rate of proper motion of each star. The bigger the arrow, the higher the rate of proper motion. If we fast forward into the future 50,000 years from today, the Big Dipper will appear something like this. On the other hand, if we were to travel back in time to a moment 50,000 years ago, the Big Dipper's appearance would have been more like this instead. The proper motion of stars can sometimes yield interesting consequences and results. Most prominent stars in many constellations are usually given various types of names. In this simplified cartoon representing the night sky, we can see the Big Dipper of Ursa Major once again, and the prominent stars of the nearby constellation Cassiopeia. The Bayer designation of naming stars, named after German astronomer Johann Bayer, uses Greek or Latin letters accompanied by the genitive case of the constellation's name to identify the stars within it. Now, it might seem like we're derailing from our topic of proper motion, but stay with me. It'll all make sense in a minute. With this nomenclature in mind, we take a look at the constellation Aquila, the eagle, and take note of this star, 
found just on the border between Aquila and its neighboring constellation Delphinus the Dolphin. You'll notice that historical star maps, like this one from 1825, show the star marked with the Greek letter Rho within the bounds of the constellation Aquila, giving it the name Rho Aquilae, but come to find out, the star's proper motion carried it out of the constellation Aquila and into Delphinus, officially completing the crossing of this constellation border in 1992. It may not appear that way on current star maps, but if we were to zoom in a whole lot more, it would look something like this. Comparing the right ascension of the star to the right ascension of the rightmost boundary line of Delphinus, we can see that the star is just to the left of that boundary line, putting it within the constellation. So, Rho Aquilae is our whose name no longer fits. It makes you think. The night sky might look very different in the distant future.